Hi everyone, Gina Craft, Facilitator of Technology Integration and Coaching, and I wanted to take a look at Flipgrid, um, specifically how Flipgrid can really empower students to um, use their voice and um, provide choice for them. Uh, we've started to talk uh, quite frequently about the four shifts, and this is a piece that can help shift in um, that fourth area, um, which is within the technology. And so I don't want to focus on Flipgrid as a the end all be all. This is just a tool to help with different areas. So I wanted to look at collaboration and how being able to give our students that ability to have more choice and, you know, express their voice. So you will go um, to flipgrid.com and then you will click log in because it's going to prompt you to log in with Google. I've already logged in, which is why mine didn't do that, but you could you would click log in with Google and then it would take you to your Flipgrid homepage. And you can see that I am part of five groups here and I have 23 topics. So basically groups are going to be, um, well, your group. So sometimes um, this might be like your class. If you are at like a high school or middle school level, you might have a group would be for every class. And then your topics are going to be what you would want your students to be discussing or collaborating on. I'm going to show you this Flipgrid certified group that I'm in because Flipgrid has different certifications. This is one that I'm already in so that you can really see um, like a fleet of responses and you can see how this all looks um, because you can notice on some of my other ones that there's just not as much there yet. Um, I can see here the, the group and I can see that it has almost 20,000 responses and it was last updated today. So there's going to be a lot here that we can look at. So I'm just going to click on that Flipgrid certified. And this group is going to take me to the topics that are located in there. So you can see there's um, three different topics. I'm just going to click in this first one, and that is going to bring up their responses. So I'm just going to quickly scroll. We can see all of these responses. Um, there's lots of responses. Uh, that are also very customizable. You can see that this one has like stickers and filters and you could upload a picture rather than taking a screenshot from your video. Um, as the teacher, you have a lot of control over these different things. So this is going, you can lock it down so it's very private. Um, people, it won't be searchable. People can't find your group. They can't see these student responses. Um, so it'd just be um, really for your um, student course, right? Um, I also like some of this data that it gives you so you can see the views and you can see those hours of engagement. If you click on those hours of engagement, it's going to pop this up and it's gonna show you some of these different things that just give you a little bit more um, data and information about that. If you were to add a response, you would hit this blue add response button. And I can see above it, here are so the things that I'm supposed to be responding to. So this is what I would be collaborating on. Um, and I'm not going to add a response. I've actually already added a response, but I just want to take you to the screen so we can see a couple of things. I can see in the upper right hand corner, I have a one minute. So I have a one minute time um, that I can't go over that one minute time limit. I have options here, so I could upload a clip. I could do just my mic if I was not comfortable with my video. Um, I could just do only my mic and it would be a black screen. Um, I can mute myself or I could record my screen and we have different effects. Those are those things that we saw in some of the other um, videos where you could put like the stickers and things like that. You can even put, you know, like a special backdrop if you wanted to put a special backdrop for your video, you could do that as well. So there are lots of different things that are customizable um, within this, but I really wanna show you that collaboration piece. So I'm just gonna click on this video right here. I'm gonna pause it so that we can see a couple of other things. This is a moderated topic here, which means that it has to be approved. So if you are concerned about, um, you know, students posting something that maybe not be appropriate, you don't want other kids to see that, you can set it to be moderated. So you have to okay that video before anybody else can see it. You can also like different videos and um, on certain topics, you can also comment back. So that's that, some of that collaboration piece. I'm going to go back to my group so that you can see a little bit about what that looks like. And I'm going to go down here. So this was one of our groups that we used last year where you were able to comment on things. So you can see that there's a there's just kind of a list here um, from the teacher perspective. 
But if I were to click on this one, I can see that uh, I have the ability here to add a comment. You could also record a video um, if you'd rather do a video comment. And then you can also change this to a private comment or public comment. So if it, as a teacher, if you wanted to provide feedback to a student privately, you could do that. If you want your students to be collaborating together and providing feedback where everybody can see it, they have that control as well. So there are a lot of different things that you can do in Flipgrid. This just completely scratches the surface um, of the ability for students to collaborate to really increase opportunities and personalize those opportunities through voice and choice. And there are lots of resources out there um, that people have made around Flipgrid. Um, so check Flipgrid out. It might be a really great resource and tool for you to use with your students along collaboration.